part 22. So this is it, huh? Fluttershy blinked at me, a bland expression on her face. Her eyes were dull, looking a sh lacking a shine in them. What is it, Rainbow Dash? Did you leave something here? She asked a rev relatively neutral question, but to me, it wasn't neutral. To me, it was infuriating. Maybe it was the nonchalant tone in her voice, or maybe it was the fact sh that she actually thought I would actually take this sitting down and get my stuff like no big deal. Or maybe it was because she didn't even look like she felt s as sick inside as I did. I slammed my hoof on her door and forced my way in. You think I came back here for a few measly possessions? I snapped, tears now rolling down my cheeks. She backed away slowly, and her eyes registered only a bit of fear, but she knew this was coming. No, she murmured. I screamed and launched myself in the air a few inches above her. So this is it then, huh? I just grab my stuff and go and you just, just let me fly out? Is that it? I demanded to know, inching closer to her. I was only met with silence. Answer me, Fluttershy, I yelled. Fluttershy's expression fell, and her frown slowly formed into a bigger one, and she began to cry. I'm so sorry, she said, bringing her hooves to her face to catch her tears. I'm so sorry, Rainbow Dash. Now I felt like a jerk. My anger subsided, and I just wanted to hug her. When I tried to, however, she pushed me away. Figures, I hissed. I just watched her cry for a bit as the tears came out of me as well. What are we doing here? I asked. She wiped her eyes and began to speak, her voice shaky. I'm sorry, Rainbow Dash. I just... I don't know what happened. She looked away from me, down to on the floor. My anger may have shrank, but it didn't go away. Well, you better start, start talking. I'm not some random stallion Fluttershy. I walked closer to her, my eyes meeting hers. I'm Rainbow Dash, remember? She sniffled and shrugged, giving me a pitiful look. My stomach churned. The way you were holding back for me and, and flying, that wasn't right. That's not how relationships work, Dash, she said, slowly turning away from me. I wanted to follow her, but she cringed when she knew I was coming closer. So I stood in that spot, shaking again. That didn't matter to me, Fluttershy. None of it did. I insisted. She continued to shake her head. Don't you get it, Rainbow? Her dull, whispering voice was beginning to rise. She turned to me now, tears bubbling in her eyes down her face. You need to join the Wonderbolts and live your dream. I have to be here, by myself. I'll be the one back to nothing. That's how it has to be. I shook my head at her statements. No, it's not true. Fluttershy sniffed hard and continued. And, and I'm not attracted to mayors. I cringed when she said that. I already know. Don't remind me, I growled, looking away from her. But that had nothing, almost nothing to do with it. Kind of. I was so scared because I was falling so hard for you, Rainbow Dash. I remained silent, my eyes fixated on her. I waited to hear her excuse. But after a while, I, I was afraid that eventually I would fall out of love with you. She said with a small frown. She was still crying. Please believe me, I never intended to hurt you. My anger was back, and I bucked into the air and landed on my two front legs hard. Then why did you let me believe we'd be together forever? Why did you tell me you love me and do all that stuff with me and be affectionate and, <laughs> you know? I was sure I didn't have to stress that last point. She was quiet. Why did you do all this? She shrugged. I don't know. It was stupid. It never would have worked out, Rainbow. I groaned, rolling my eyes. Maybe for a time I believed it would. But I was beginning to feel so... She put her hooves to her chest. Confused. I felt like if there was ever a day I'd fall out of love with you. She grew silent and I looked at her, waiting for her to continue. Even though I really didn't want her to, my whole body was trembling, and I just wanted to crash and burn again. What? I asked. Don't you see? If I end it now, I'll save us. I'll save both of us the heartbreak, she said. I neighed loudly and banged my hooves on the ground again. Are you serious? You spared no one heartbreak, Fluttershy. 
You think you're a saint because you broke up with me early? I said, quoting. I, she flinched every time I yell, yelled. Well, I got news for you, I continued. You didn't spare anyone anything because now I'm heartbroken and you don't get... Another fucking pun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because now I'm heartbroken and you don't give a diamond dog's ass. They call them the diamond dogs. I whinnied. She gave me that sad, pathetic look. But all it did was make me angrier. And if you expect me to stick around Ponyville and continue on as friends with every pony, you're wrong on that one, too. I was never worth shit to you, and I don't think I ever will be. I began to back away from her, and she watched me, not even attempting to stop me. So this is it, huh? I just leave and never see you and the others again, and you'll be okay with that? She shook her head. I feel awful. It's all my fault, she said, looking down at the ground, a few stray tears escaping her eyes. I nodded. You're damn right it is, Fluttershy. You shouldn't have led me on in the first place. You should have never made me love you. And with that, I, and with that, I began to take my leave. I was a few f feet away from the door when she spoke up. I've come to terms with this already, she mumbled. I stopped where I was walking, but continued to face the door, my expression contorting from anger to sadness. No, she wouldn't see me cry. Not again. I was never as happy with anyone as I was with you. This year was the best year of my life. She went on. I silently sobbed, trying my best to hold back any noise. I'm sure a few whimpers were heard, but I was al almost proud of how well I held in any noise. I'm so sorry, Rainbow Dash. I'll always remember what we had. I let out a long, heavy sob and ran over to the door. Never talk to me again! And with that, I dashed away from her house, leaving her with her sadness. The storm had almost blew away. There was still an icky overcast over the sky. I was sobbing uncontrollably now and made sure I flew high up in the sky so that no pony would see me or hear me. This was it. It was really over, wasn't it? I found a cloud I could rest on and curled up into a ball and continued to cry and sob. Oh, Fluttershy. I cried. I covered my eyes with my hooves and allowed myself to cry. However, I felt my cloud shift and wait as I felt someone land on it. I flinched and sat up, covering the, up the fact I was crying. Hey, can't you see I'm busy here? I asked in a semi-stable voice, wiping my eyes. I gasped when I saw it was Gilda. Gilda? Her tired and bitter frown went to another semi-wicked smile as she walked over to me. Only this time, I didn't try to back away. I sat on the cloud and lowered my head, allowing more tears to fall. She placed a large brown wing around me to shelter me from the wind and leaned down to face me. Make up your mind, Dash? She asked. I remained silent. Fluttershy was so dead set on me leaving her, and after the horrible things I said, there was nowhere, no way she wanted to get back with me now. I ruined everything. I lowered my head more in shame, more tears falling from my eyes. Gilda leaned close and began to wipe my tears with her talons. As much as this repulsed me right now, I continued the letter. I was too tired to do much about it at the moment. I looked up at her, my magenta eyes narrowing into her golden ones. I have made up my mind, Gilda, I said. Her smile grew and it was almost frightening. Like a jack-o'-lantern, jack-o'-lantern's evil grin, on Halloween, it stared right at me. I'm gonna join the Wonderbolts. Part 23. It's for the best, Angel. Never talk to me again. Rainbow Dash stormed out of my house after that, and out of, out of my window, I could see her zoom away. When she, when she left, that's when I lost my composure, and I immediately galloped outstairs to my room and jumped onto my bed, burying my face in my pillow. I squeezed my pillow against me as I sobbed into it. I ruined everything. I never planned on this happening. I never planned to break up with Rainbow Dash, but I ne also never planned to fall in love with her. Why did she have to be such a wonderful pony? She was my favorite pony of all, and I ruined her. I felt a soft thump next to me, and I lifted my eyes up from my pillow to see Angel looking at me, a frown on his face. 
He must not have known what was happening, but he only patted my foreleg in a consoling manner. I sniffled and sat, sat up a bit, looking at him. Oh, Angel, how did I have the stupidity to hurt the most important pony in my life? I asked, looking out the window at the dreary overcast sky. She, he hopped over to me and sat in between my legs, nuzzling against my thigh and hugging me. I gave a sad smile and gently pet his head. She hates me. She was the only pony in this world that meant more to me than anything, and she hates me. My sobbing returned as I put my hooves over my face. Angel climbed up into my shoulder and tapped my face to look at him. He began to do a little dance as if to tell me something. I smiled at him and nodded. Oh, and sitting like this is uncomfortable. My legs fall asleep, my arms fall asleep. My back hurts. It's hard work doing this. But I'll do it. Just for you, okay? All right? Nah, nah I'm good. You're right, Angel. I was just trying to protect protect both of us from per further pain. If she thinks we both hurt now, just imagine what it'd be like if another year from now, or even if, or even another half a year from now. I said, nibbling on my hoof nervously. He nodded and began to act another thing out. I smiled at him and picked him up, cradling him in my arms. Tears continued to run down my face, and I smiled. You're right again. It's for the best, Angel. I closed my eyes and let the tears fall. Only this time, a small, a small smile crept on my face. And she'll be so much happier. She seems sad now, but she'll get over it. I will too. I've come to terms with this before she did. I fell silent, and the Angel gave me an unsure look. Didn't I? I asked. Angel shook his head and began to act out something. My tears came back, and I held him tighter. You're right, Angel. I'm not as over it as she is, but she'll get over it much quicker than me. She's Rainbow Dash, after all, I mean. I paused, taking a shaky breath. I mean, now she can be in the Wonderbolts and meet another Mayor Stallion who won't hurt her like I did. Angel looked up at me, lowering his ears. Oh, Angel, what if I made a mistake? Angel's face grew sour as he shook his head quickly. I was taken aback. What do you mean I can't go back on my decision now, I asked. He hopped out of my arms onto my bed and began to act out something crazy. Still, I knew exactly what he meant. I know. I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think it was the right thing to do. I rubbed my foreleg and sighed, a sinking feeling in my chest. She's... she's really gone. I know it's what I wanted, but... Do, do I really want it? Angel hopped over to me, hitting my hoof. He put his hands on his hips and glared up at me. I nodded and sighed. You're right, Angel. I can't have thoughts like that now. I already did it. The, da the damage is done. I just have to move on, don't I? He nodded sadly, hugging my thigh again. This reminds me of that one scene, like those scenes from Home Alone 3, where he's talking to his little rat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure me and Doug Walker are the only people on the planet that actually watch that movie. <laughs> There was even a fourth one, and a fifth one. Watch the fourth one. We sat like this for a long time. I let the reality of my decision sink in. That I had broken up with Rainbow Dash. She hated me now, and would probably leave Ponyville, and I would never see her again. Those thoughts hit themselves against my head, and rang in my ears for so long as we sat there. Every time I had a thought, what I did was wrong, I would suppress it. That got harder and harder as the thoughts of Rainbow Dash making me smile and making me laugh came back to my head. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore. I shook myself from that dream as I had woken up a while ago. I hopped out of bed and Angel gave me a confused look. Angel, I can't be in the house anymore. I need to get out. I need to go see my friends or something. Angel glared at me once again and I couldn't help but give a sincere laugh. Of course you're my friend, silly bunny. But... I need advice from a girl. I looked out the window. A girl I know has probably broken many hearts before. I knew who I had to see. I trotted down the stairs out of my house and headed to Car Carousel Boutique. I wanted to go see Rarity and get her advice. As I arrived, I gently tapped on her door and lowered my head, waiting for an answer. 
After a few seconds, she opened the door. Her work glasses on and some fabrics dra draped over her shoulders. Gotta love those glasses. <laughs> Fluttershy, dear, so nice to see. Ugh. She flinched. <laughs> she flinched. I must have looked a mess. My eyes were bloodshot and my hair was probably a bit messy. Before she realized what she did was rude, she composed herself and invited my, me in. Fluttershy, darling. What happened? She asked, inviting me to sit down next to her. I looked down at the ground before answering. I just got to the point. I broke up with Rainbow Dash, I murmured. I flinched a bit, waiting for a response. Rarity's jaw merely gaped open in absolute shock. What? Whatever for, dear? She asked, trotting over to me and placing an arm around me in a hug. I didn't hug back but rested my head on her shoulder. I blinked a few tears out of my eyes, getting on her fabric. It's a long story, I said. I looked up at her. Can we discuss this at the spa? Her voice, her face lit, lit up and, as she giggled. Oh, you read my mind, sister. She took, she took off her work attire and opened the door for me as, she, as we walked out. Now I want you to tell me every juicy detail, she, she said. I didn't want to relive what happened because I knew I'd cry about it too. But still, I knew Rarity would be an expert on this subject. As we walked, Rarity talked about work and rude customers. I glanced up at the sky occasionally, looking for a rainbow streak to zoom across it. The sky stayed as gray as my mood when I didn't even spot a lick of color. Part 24, a bit, hard to, a bit harder to swallow. Oh, and... <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, Coco's, uh, Coco's going nuts is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm surprised somebody found this story in 2020. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's actually get started. At the spa, Rarity and I already settled into the hot bath. Even though she insisted on the full treatment, we do, I, to we do, I told her th that all I, hmm. I don't think this sentence was typed out correctly, but whatever. I told her that all I really wanted was the bath. She finally she agreed to my wishes and settled for a bath. Once in the hot bubble bath, I felt my achy head sort of calm down and my shivers cease. I was so stressed out from this morning, and it was so it was hard to believe this wretched day was still going on. I was sort of glad Rarity came to keep me company, but all I wanted to do right now was cry because I had to go, go to sleep tonight and face the fact that Rainbow was gone and hated me. I lowered my eyes and felt and let myself drift in and out of those thoughts before Rarity's voice jogged me awake. So, darling, tell me everything, she said in a sympathetic voice. I took a breath and told the story from beginning to end and on how I did it and what had happened about Rainbow Dash yelling at me and her crying and me breaking her heart and how I felt horrible. Well, Fluttershy, of course she said all those things to you. You did break her heart, after all, she said to me, shifting a bit in the water. I took a shaky breath, refusing to cry. I know, and I feel awful that I hurt her, Rarity. I mean, you should have seen her. I've never seen her cry like that before. I put my hoof to my chest and closed my eyes. And I did it. I caused pain to the pony who was so important to me. I think I confused Rarity for a moment as she went as she went quiet and began to speak again. Well, why exactly did you two break up? There were so many reasons, deeper than just wanting her to move on. I was beginning to feel like a shell, like my shyness was holding her back all these months. I felt like I was this nothing compared to Rainbow Dash. She was just too amazing to me. But I didn't want to play psychiatrist with Rarity, so I just gave her the surface reasons. I didn't just didn't want to I just didn't want her to feel like I was holding her back. I rubbed my foreleg. And I'm I'm not attracted to, to mares. Other mares didn't attract me like she did. I was just afraid that eventually those feelings would leave and I should end it sooner to save us both the heartache. Rarity gave me a small giggle which sort of upset me. I had absolutely no desire to laugh or even smile. I just looked at her. Darling, those are perfectly good reasons to break up with someone, you know? She said, lifting her hoof out of the water to make a point. 
I mean, you can't date someone you won't be attracted to forever, and eventually those feelings would go away. Rarity was right. I really did think those feelings would go away. Where were they, were they going away right now? I thought so. I thought I was losing attraction for the Rainbow Pony. But even so, why did I feel a gaping hole in my chest without her? I decided to ask Rarity. Then why do I feel so... so empty? I asked her. Rarity smiled and put her hoof on my shoulder. It's only natural. I've broken up with many stallions I no longer was attracted to and still felt sad when they were gone, she assured me. It only made me feel worse. I sighed. I guess... I guess you just don't know what you have until it's gone. This caused Rarity to move closer to me. Now, now, dear. I know this might be really hard for you. As the days go by, you'll begin to regret your decision, but honey... She shut her eyes, shaking her head. A mare does not break up with some pony for no reason. Even if you can't exactly pinpoint the exact cause, there is always a hidden instinct telling you that it wouldn't work. She, she put her hoof to my chest, and your gut was telling you that it wouldn't. I looked at Rarity for a long time, feeling that sick feeling again. I wanted to collapse under the water and sob, but she was right. I mean, I couldn't have done that for no reason, right? I did it because there was a reason. The reason I gave to Rarity and even myself I couldn't believe. I loved her though, Rarity. I really did. I know I felt love with her. Well, we all feel love at some point in a relationship. For all you know, it was infatuation, she, sh she insisted. I, ro I rose an eyebrow with that at that. For a year? Rarity smirked at me. Okay, when did you start to have those feelings of doubt, if you will? She asked. I bit my cheek, thinking of a response to that question. I, th I think it was after winter wrap-up. I saw her utilizing those, her skills, and it was the center of attention. That's what she needs, not some insecure mere nobody, I mumbled, averting my eyes from Rarity's gaze. She slammed her hoof into the water, splashing me a bit. I squeaked at it when I saw her glaring at me. Fluttershy, you are a beautiful pony. You could have any stallion your heart desires. I mean, sure, you do have some insecurity issues, but... She put her hoof to all my cheek and sort of examined me. Rarity knew what was up. Darling, I, I have just a solution for you. You know I just got tickets to, see a, to go see a Red Robin concert and Twilight canceled. I was wondering if you wanted to go. She cooed. I felt a flush go on my face. Red Robin? Yum. You mean the one I went to flight school with? Rarity gave me a confused look. Well, he is a Pegasus. He's the one with a red mane and coal-colored coat. You know, I actually know him? I shrugged. Well, knew. We were in flight school together. Him and Rainbow Dash never got along. Rarity squealed. You're telling me you actually know a celebrity? She squeed, hopping up and down in the water, making waves. A small smile encroached my face, and I nodded. I guess so. I mean, I didn't know he was famous, I admitted. I guess I was in the dark with Canterlot, with Canterlot's well-to-do. Rarity scoffed. I can't even call you a friend anymore, Fluttershy, she teased. He's gotten famous overnight with his amazing voice and acrobatics he does at his concerts. Oh, you miss something must go, she said. I bit my bottom lip, averting my eyes. I don't know, Rarity. I mean, what if? No, she cut me off. You cannot worry. It's tomorrow night, and I want you to sleep over at my house tonight. We'll get you all dolled up and everything. He'll be here in Ponyville for two nights, and we're pretty close. She put her hooves on her cheeks. What if he notices us? Notices you. You were one of his former classmates, after all, she gushed. I giggled. Well, Rarity, it's been so long. And plus, I'm not too memorable, I admitted. Rarity smiled at me, leaning close. Well, tomorrow night at the concert will make you memorable. If not to him, then another stallion, she whispered. Take it from me. Get yourself out there as soon as possible. What about rebounds? Those are bad, Rarity, I said. She chuckled. Silly, I don't mean a relationship. She winked at me before settling into the bath. Like a one night stand or something? Like, oh shit. <laughs> we'll talk more in a bit. I need beauty rest. Even though she was already beautiful, I knew exactly what she meant, and I thought of a cute stallion giving me a wink, or smiling at me, or noticing me. 
Then I got images of other mares or stallions finding rainbow desirable. Her personality and charm drew every pony in. My excitement turned to fear as I thought of other mares or stallions hugging rainbow, kissing rainbow, or even falling in love with her. I felt my body run cold. The idea of rainbow falling in love with another pony. No, I've come to terms with this, I said to myself, shutting my eyes tightly. Okay, I came to terms with that. I couldn't be with her anymore. I did come to terms with that. Maybe coming to terms with the fact that she might fall in love with some pony else would be a bit harder to swallow. Part 25 Red Robin, the pegasus that had sprung up as an overnight sensation throughout Equestria. What drew him into the public eye was not just his amazingly velvety voice, but the stunts he would do and his dancing. Formerly a resident of Cloudsdale, his stunts landed him a, a position for the Wonderbolts. Lacking any real discipline or drive to be the best, he quit that dream and focused mainly on his singing. The stunts were was just for fun, but he was a natural. Eventually, he caught the eye of Canterlot's most elite residents, who had the money to fund his singing career, and it just took off from there. I, I had always had a crush on him in flight school. Sure, he was a bit egotistical, but he was just so confident and full of himself, even more so than Rainbow. I guess I have a talent for being attracted to the egotistical ones. He wasn't like Rainbow, though, in some aspects. He didn't have much of a sense for loyalty. Any little girlfriend he had got tossed aside when some pony prettier came along. I never wanted to risk getting my heart broken, so I just admired him from afar. Him and Rainbow had the biggest rivalry. They would race each other constantly. Sometimes he beat her, and sometimes she'd beat him. Eventually, when I was able to leave flight school for good and live on the ground, I stopped seeing him. And with time, that crush went away. Tonight, I was mostly just there to see his music and stunts and leave. Despite what Rarity said, I really didn't want to meet any stallion. Oh, Fluttershy, you look simply gorgeous, beamed Rarity as she looked at her final product, which was me at the moment. I have to admit, I was looking rather cute. I had flowers tied into my hair with a bit of makeup and a tank top with a nice, nice skirt. Rarity insisted I wear shoes, so I wore boots on each hoof that went up to my knees. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> she fanned herself, proud of her work. I may have looked beautiful, but she looked way better than me. Rarity always managed to look beautiful. She wore big, beautiful hoop earrings. God damn. They slutty to that. <laughs> a cute black top and a leather skirt like mine with some extra high heels on. Oh my god. Oh lord. Whew. Sweaty man dot JPEG. <laughs> I tried to wear a pair of those and proceeded to fall on my face. Oh, Rarity, I wouldn't look like this without your help. I looked at myself in the mirror and smiled. I wondered what Rainbow would think of me looking like this and quickly shut my eyes to dismiss that thought. Rarity shook her head. Nonsense, darling. Your beauty is all natural, she beamed again, trotting to the door. Now come on, he'll be performing in a few hours. We'll want to claim our spot, she insisted, galloping out the door. Even in heels, she was walking normally. I envied her for that. Still, I galloped after her to the concert. Once we arrived, it was already crowded. We fought our way to our spot near the front now. It must have cost Rarity a fortune. It was already loud with all the ponies talking, not to mention them being very close to us. It sort of made me uncomfortable. I leaned over to Rarity, almost shouting for my voice to be heard. I really do owe you for the tickets, Rarity, she, I said. Even my shouting sounded like a normal voice. Rarity turned to me and shook her head. No, no, what are friends for anyway? I wanted you to come with me. Please consider this a gift. She winked. Besides, it's good to get out. Get your mind off things, you know, she said with a smile. I gave, I gave a sad look and nodded. Yeah, Rarity. Now that she mentioned it, my mind was swimming with Rainbow. What was she doing? She was probably better off without me now. She probably wasn't even upset anymore, I bet. No, I shook those thoughts away. It can't be helped. Suddenly the lights dimmed and the crowd went even more nuts. The ponies around me almost went... Wait. The ponies around me almost went nuts, and even Rarity did. I merely looked around. I hadn't known what to expect, but I wasn't going to cheer wildly for something that might not even be worth it. Rarity nudged me. He's coming, he's coming. 
She squealed, hopping up and down with her with the other ponies here. I continued to look up at the stage, clapping my hooves to at least be polite, as if Red Robin needed more cheering. Hello, pony, <laughs> pony. A booming male voice spoke over the speakers. The crowd continued to cheer. Are you all ready for Red Robin? The concert practically exploded with excitement. Me suddenly, music began to play. It sounded a bit calm, but you could tell it was going to build. It had a bit of a hip-hoppy feel to it as I continued to watch the stage, wondering how he would make an appearance. Knowing him, it would be extravagant to make himself noticed as if he w wasn't already going to be. Suddenly, a, pel a Pegasus sil silhouette appeared on the stage with smoke and lights concealing his identity. I felt my stomach flood with butterflies. I wondered what he looked like after all these years. Had he matured? Gotten cuter? Those questions swam in my head for a few seconds before finally he appeared near the stage in full view. My jaw gaped. He looked at just as stunning as before, if not better. His red mane styled wildly and his black coat shiny. His cutie mark was some type of bird and his cocky smirk was still the same. I knew another pony with a cocky smirk like that. Oddly enough, thoughts of her escaped my mind as soon as he sang. His, his voice was smooth. It wasn't like any boy band sounding voice or a rough country voice. It was smooth. It was silky. It sounded a bit higher pitched, but he hit all the high notes perfectly. Even though his voice was wonderful, the songs he sung weren't too appropriate. Uh, I don't want to sing. I'm not going to sing this shit. <laughs> Hey girl, I've been debating if I should take you home. Should I take you home? The ponies in the crowd were going nuts, standing out of going nuts, standing out of their seats and cheering wildly. I hadn't recognized most of, most of them from Ponyville. Had, had they traveled all the way here to see them? See him? I don't mean to keep you waiting, but I just got to know if you're ready. And now I knew why they came. He slowly flapped his wings as he continued to sing, and the crowd screamed even louder. Rarity's shrill screaming voice almost hear, hurt my ears. No, it w just wasn't Rarity. It was every pony here, all of them cheering wildly for him. She says she want to take her skirt off, be my guess. I decide to take my shirt off, show my chest. <laughs> and we be super <laughs> So you know what's next. Maybe something at Ugh, that makes me lol. I never got why ponies cheered at concerts. Why scream louder than the singer? He began to fly over the crowd as Mare's hooves barely grazed his, doing various flips and turns. It was amazing how he could sing so perfectly and still pull these moves off. You've been saying all night long that you couldn't wait to get me home alone. So what you gonna do to me? Don't talk about it, let me see. Let me see, let me see. <laughs> just, anytime there's any singing in any story, I'll just do that. Unless it's something that's kind of sincere and... You know what I mean? If it's like a sincere moment, I'll take it seriously. You know? I'm not taking that seriously. <laughs> Then I saw his green eyes trail down across the crowd and lock onto mine. He continued his performance, but his expression changed drastically. It went, f it went from cr cool and collected to overly happy and excited. I felt my entire body practically melt in his gaze and my cheeks burn. It was like flight school all over again. Rarity nudged me for my thoughts. He looked at you. I saw him, she squealed. A big smile on her face. I shook my head. He looked at every pony, Rarity, I said. She shook her head as well and, and continued. No, 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 he saw you. He looked at you, I saw him, she explained again. I knew I couldn't win this fight with her, so I nodded. I knew I couldn't win because she was right. Red Robin looked at me, and not only that, it seemed he remembered me. And not only that, but he smiled. Was I wrong for that sort of thing, making me happy? But I knew he was famous and just recognizing an old classmate won't really make you that important. I'm sure he was used to old classmates from Cloudsdale going up to him. A few more flips and acrobatics in the air before he landed on stage. And not only were his flying skills incredible, he could dance amazingly too. 
He used his wings to his advantage to help his moves look even more graceful. And with one finishing move, practically flying in the air and dancing, he landed on his hooves as the song ended. The crowd erupted with applause. Stunned that it was over, I clapped my hooves as well and stood up to leave. Rarity tapped me. Where do you think you're going, dear? A snack? She asked. I shrugged. I thought it was over. It was, wasn't it? I mean, a singer just sings a song. Rarity laughed. Oh, don't be silly, dear. He performs a, m a few more songs tonight, she insisted, patting my seat. I bit my bottom lip, but sat down, watching Red Robin. It was the sex, though. The sex, though. God, just imagining a pony with, with grills and face tattoos and dreadlocks. Like, well, cornrows, that's what, what he has. <laughs> just, like, I'm in my head, I'm imagining, like, that one picture where that girl <laughs> showed her chest and Post Malone, and Post Malone was just like, oh. <laughs> Like, that one picture is the funniest thing, and I'm just imagining it with this guy. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out tonight, he said with a smile. The crowd continued to clap. You're all beautiful. <laughs> it's so nice to see my, my little ponies. <laughs> my little ponies showing their support. He took a small bow as they continued to cheer. Now you're all very special to me. But there is one pony here who I have known since they were barely learning how to flap our wings. I felt my body overcome with dread. He wasn't. I felt my cheeks flush as Rarity shook me with anticipation. He's talking about you, she whispered. He couldn't be. She was a very quiet one, so if everyone can sort of clap quietly, as if not to scare her, it'll be alright. The audience laughed. Maybe he was. Please put your hooves together for my dear old classmate, Fluttershy. And suddenly a spotlight was beamed onto me as I felt the entire concert, concert hall staring at me and clapping for some reason. How did the guy with the spotlight automatically know who he was talking about? <laughs> Whatever. I guess he told him or something. I felt that moment in time, I felt like an ant trapped under a class cup, desperately trying to escape as young students pointed and laughed at its attempts. I immediately got up to try to run away as I stood up and tried to gallop off. All I wanted to do was get out of there, but something he said caught my attention, and as soon as he said it, I knew I wouldn't be allowed to leave. And I hope she enjoys the rest of the show, as this next song, I, tr I cringed. Each pony in the audience seemed to be pushing me back. Go on, go on, they urged, but I just wanted to leave. It was hard to believe that just 72 hours ago, I was cuddling with Rainbow Dash, and now I'm in a crowded concert hall, a place I never thought I'd be about to... I, that I'd be about to be sung to by a stallion I used to go to school with. It's funny how things change, isn't it? Lyrics to Usher. Is that an Usher song? What? I, I, I don't know. I've, I've never listened to Usher, so. <laughs> oh my god. Part 26. Take you here, take you there, take you under. Red Robin gave a coy smirk and flew up to me and gently took my hooves. The confidence in him reminded me of Rainbow Dash, at least before she met me. There was always something about confident ponies that got to me. The crowd oohed and awed as it, at it as Rarity cheered me on as well. I shut my eyes tightly, feeling a blush form on my face. He snickered. Damn. I opened my eyes to see his green eyes staring at me. He winked, then flew me up into the air with him above the crowd. Fucking stupid messages. Hope I didn't mess up the sound. I see you over there so hypnotic, thinking about what I do to that body. Oh, goodness. Oh, good lord. She's gonna be defiled. Nah, she's probably already been. <laughs> As he sang, he twirled me around. It was scary. I had never been flown like that before. Maybe Rainbow was too gentle with me. It seemed like this was giving me the push I needed. It felt dirty to smile at what was happening. Girl, tonight you're the prey. I'm the hunter. Take you here, take you there, take you under. Imagine me 
me whisper in your ear that I wanna. He leaned in closely, hovering his muzzle near my ear. Take off all your clothes and put something on ya. The crowd began to cheer at that as my cheeks flushed bright pink. He certainly hadn't changed from flight school, that's for sure. As the song continued, he took care to guide me through his techniques. The way he flew and the way he held me made sure it looked like we were in sync, even though I had no idea what was going on still. If Rainbow was all about speed, Red was all about grace. As the song began to draw a bit to an end, he looked at me and winked again. I gasped and put my hooves on his shoulders as he shot up into the sky, higher and higher as he sang. Camera ponies seemed to follow, so the audience could still see him on the big screens in the, on the stage. I shut my eyes tightly, about to scream. I'm gonna make you wanna scream. <laughs> oh. And then he wrapped his forelegs around my waist and stopped flapping his wings allowing us to free fall down as he continued to sing the high notes to, to his song. My eyes widened and I felt myself ten tense up. This was such a rush and I was still scared, excited ev even. Even as we were inches away from the audience, he spread his wings and flapped them roughly, allowing us to hover in the air once more as he continued to sing the conclusion of his song. As it ended, we stayed in the air before he gently set me, set me down next to Rarity. He took my hoof and brought it to his mouth and kissed it. What an exquisite flyer you are, he cooed before returning to the stage. I sat there, still completely stunned. What had just happened? It all felt well, way too surreal to be reality. It must have been a dream. All of this is, must have been a dream. Not only had my childhood crush become a celebrity, but he danced with me. It was all unreal. I couldn't even hear Rarity gush at me at how jealous she was and how well I had done flying with him. My face was blank as I watched him fly back up to the stage, unable to really utter a phrase. The audience continued applauding until he put up one of his hooves to subdue them. Thanks again, everypony. That was pretty exciting, wasn't it? He asked. The crowd responded with a unified yeah as they continued clapping. Red Robin gave a smirk and trotted around the cave. Let's take it down a bit now. I'll get another slower song going. He winked at me and I think he could see how flustered I was from all that. I looked back up at him, neither happy nor mad, just blank. The lights on the stage turned all blue now and calmer as a slower beat began to play. Oh no, I hope this wouldn't be sad. Red Robin began his smooth dance moves on the stage as the music played as the audience sat and listened. Rarity nudged me. Oh, I love this song, she said. I gave an unsure glance at her and listened. Now, now, she loved me shorty. I loved her. Used to jump up on the Maybach and roll, and roll out. Used to care. She used to share. The love that she used to give me can't be found. I, I sighed and lowered my ears, trying to block out the song, even though, even though the lyrics were hitting close to home. I shut my eyes to block it all out. But uh, all I can see is her. I opened my eyes desperately looking around. The crowd that once cheered for me see, seemed to be staring at me, giving me dirt, dirty looks, judging me. It was in my imagination. I knew it was. They couldn't have known I broke up with her, right? I shook my head to get that image of the crowd judging me away and looked back up to Red Robin. As he sang, he had a smile on his face. Why sing such a sad song with a smile? I know saying sorry just wouldn't do it. Her heart is obliterated. I'm trying to travel through, but it's like moving mountains. It's like moving mountains, hey. I lowered my eyes, allowing a few tears to fall discreetly. I brought my hoof to my face to wipe them before Rarity could catch them escape. I was so stupid to not see how I broke her heart. Did this guilt mean I should go back to her? No, I did the right thing. I made the right decision, and Rarity and an Angel were right. I had to live with it. I sat there now, thinking about whether I'd be a year from now if I, if I stayed with Rainbow. I'd still be in Ponyville, and so sh would she. She'd be a weather pony. I don't know if we'd be happy, or sad, or fighting, or miserable. I mean, I didn't regret my decision. I knew that I, need, that I needed to be get more independent, and she needed to live her dream. And thanks to what I did, she was on her way to becoming a Wonderbolt. At least I hope. I hoped that her dreams would come true, and she was she would be happy without me. I smiled to myself, 
The thought of Rainbow flying with the Wonderbolts. The thought of her living her dream as a cr as the crowd cheered for her. She would be in her perform performance outfit doing flips and turns. They weren't like Red Robin's dancing. They were better. They were true stunts that would mesmerize the crowd for hours. Eventually, I was able to block out thoughts of her with another mare stallion and had thoughts of her just being happy, smiling, joking, back to her old self. I may have ruined that for her now, but in a few days, she will see that being a Wonderbolt is much more important than me. Surely it was. I seemed to be in my own little wor world when the song ended. It seemed the concert was over as well, as they were clearing out. How long was I out of it for? Rarity had a big smile on her face, and I instinctively smiled back. We walked back to our houses through Ponyville, and Rarity threw a foreleg around me in a hug. Thanks again for coming with me, dear. I told you you'd have a good, great time, she, s she said happily. I smiled and nodded. Thank you, Rarity. I really did enjoy myself. I somewhat lied. It was true that flying with Red Robin was fun. The thoughts that plagued my mind the rest of the night sort of canceled it out. Still, I mustn't be rude. Rarity's smile turned to a devious smirk. So, what do you think of our, your old childhood friend? She asked, giggling. I giggled back and shrugged. I don't know. It was all an act to, to impress the crowd, I bet. I, should, I suggested. Of course, Rarity would have none of that. Are you serious? Not after the way he smiled at you. I wouldn't be surprised if you got a call from him again the next few days. I chuckled. I'd be a bit more concerned as how he got my number. We both shared a laugh when suddenly a stallion with a headset on trot trotted over to us, panting heavily. Miss Fluttershy? He asked us. Rarity looked at me and pointed. She's Fluttershy. She beamed. I nodded. Yes, I'm Fluttershy. Well, what is it? The stallion reached into his bag and pulled out a tiny note. Red Robin asked me to deliver this to you personally, he said. I assumed he waited for me to read it as I opened up. Opened it up. Rarity squealed, and I only let out a small gasp. Tonight was fun. Real great seeing you again. I'll be here for another week. Let's catch up sometime. Grab some tea? R R. The stallion looked at me, tilting his head. I bit my bottom lip and shrugged. Sure. Why not? It's just tea, I said. The stallion smiled and nodded before trotting off. We stood for a few moments before Rarity broke the silence. I can't believe you have a date with Red Robin. Oh my gosh, girl, I can't even begin to tell you how jealous I am. Oh my gosh, what will you wear? What will you look like? I'm going to make an outfit for you right now. And with that, she, sh she was off back to her house. I shook my head and giggled. Oh, Rarity, always looking out for me. I began to trot home by myself, and this is when the thoughts of self-loathing came back. I felt, I felt like a horrible pony for doing this. I was going on another date already. What kind of pony am I? I shook the he negative thoughts away the best I could, but the Paris sprites, they flew back and buzzed around me again. I wanted so desperately to wake Spike up and make him write Rainbow a letter, but I knew it was too late. I just... I had to just live with this. Once I got home, I climbed into bed and rested my head on, on the pillow. My cheeks hurt from frowning. I looked outside at the moon and stars as they twinkled back at me. I didn't deserve to look at them. If it wasn't for me looking for that same rainbow streak in the sky, I would have turned my head away in shame. I wondered what she was up to right now.